I've been writing about that since the spring of 2011 when they first passed it. I mean, it, as soon as it passed, I was once I realized what was in it, I just, you know, it it became really something that I felt like the rest of the world needed to be paying attention to because, or at least the rest of the country, because it seemed like Michigan was sort of the beta tester for this new model of removing democracy when it becomes inconvenient to getting things uh, passed the way, you know, the people who have the power in Lansing want it to be, uh, want things to be done. So, uh, and sadly, much of what, you know, I predicted or at least, you know, warned people about has come true largely. And now who could have predicted that it would have led to, you know, the poisoning of drinking water in a, in a major city in Michigan. There's no question that a lot of the cities that have been involved with this, all of the cities that have been involved with this, have had financial issues, but the financial issues that they have are largely not the result of corruption and mismanagement and incompetence, which is what you would be led to believe if the proponents of emergency management would have, you know, would have their way, but they're the result of the cratering of their industrial base. Almost every single one of them was either automotive related or some was centered around some other major uh, local industry and when that left it cratered you know it cratered the economy and left behind all of this infrastructure that needed to be supported on a fraction of the number of people there and the fraction of the sort of economic wealth that sort of a community shares all of that was gone so you know it's it's been very unfortunate to see um, our urban areas instead of being sort of renewed and invested in they've been disinvested in and to the point where they no longer can support the infrastructure, the their basic local, you know, community infrastructure, or if you want to call it that, for a large geographical area. Well, I, I think there are two different things going on. I and I, I'm the sort of person who tends to believe the best in people, um, and in some cases I'm justified, in some cases I'm not. I think um, in the best of situations. There are people who, and I believe that our governor is probably one of these people who feels that a model of running a government like a business is the correct model, and that if you enrich the the wealthy, you know, manufacturing uh, heads and in organizations, that that will benefit society as a whole. And they believe this, and so everything that they do is surrounded it, it is based on, you know, making sure that corporations do extremely well, and that that, that will be the panacea to the point where if there is a city with a problem then you want to put in a corporate management management type person and let them do their thing and their thing is almost always busting the unions and privatizing the services to the point where what a municipality once owned or you know had as community property they no longer have control over so i think there's that and i do think that there are people cheering from the sidelines that are part of the, who would receive that largesse of tax and you know of tax money being infused into their profit center so these these are people who provide the services like prison food services for example or uh, you know all the things that go into educating children and and things that go into running governments and things like that they want to be you know this is sort of the last way for tax dollars to be funneled into corporate, you know, bottom lines. And so that's what they're going after. So it's things like education and it's the prioritizing of government services.